here we are at Hampstead Heath, uh, and in fact, up here we have two chains of reservoirs. One the Hampstead Heath chain, the Highgate chain, and these are really historic sites because here was where the first water supply for London started. Some of these lakes were, were the first water supply for the inhabitants of the city of London, which is just down the road, just a couple of miles from Trafalgar Square. This area is owned and managed by the city of London and they have to adhere to various bits of legislation. One is the Hampstead Heath Act, the other one is the Reservoirs Act, and that's the area of, of civil engineering that I work in. I'm a panel engineer under the Reservoirs Act. I go around and do MOTs on dams. And when we find there's a defect, then we have to repair them, and they have to meet certain standards. And one of the standards for all of these reservoirs was if a flood comes through this valley, is the flood controlled and does the dam overtop and fail and so we must protect the residents downstream of Camden and should these dams fail then the tube system would fill up with water it would be absolutely catastrophic for London. So the City of London recognised that they had to do an awful lot of work here in terms of keeping the floods in the valley and safely passing the floods through the valley and we had to design a scheme that would fit into the heat. It had to fit into this landscape. It couldn't be hard concrete works. And we had to do the work in an area where there are four million visitors a year, and we had to do it with machinery and plants that could work on the small footpaths that exist here. We couldn't make big roads. We couldn't bring large amounts of material onto the site. We had to use most of the materials we could and find them on the site and dispose of materials on the site. So there are, there are about 20 dams up here, three of which um, come into the Reservoirs Act, but what we chose to do was to do a little bit of work on most of the dams so that we didn't do huge intrusive works on some dams and not on others. And so the dam I'm standing on has been raised by about two and a half metres. We've built the lake here um, and rounded it off so it looks more natural. We've made an island. We actually dug the fill from up on the hill and took silt from the valley out of the reservoir and put it into the hole that we created. And so we've improved the water quality here. On the next dam up, which is called Ladies Bathing, we've given them a new bathing facility and we've put a new spillway in at that dam. Further down the valley, we've raised the dam actually with sheet piling, and you would think that that would be very intrusive, but we've planted in front of it, we've put reed growth in front of it, so it hides it. And in other cases, we've buried concrete boxes under the ground so that people don't see that civil engineering work. They just see the start of it, and they see the end of it. And one of the big challenges here was that a lot of these trees are veteran trees, very old trees. We had to work around them. We had to be careful that we didn't kill the root systems and damage the trees and lose the beautiful environment of the heath. So from that point of view, it involved not only civil engineers, but environmentalists, fish specialists, tree specialists, you name it, they were here. And we all worked together as a team to bring this scheme to fruition. One of the challenges as a civil engineer that I hadn't really envisaged until I got involved with this job was, was the amount of public opinion against a scheme. We had a, a great body of people who were objecting to the work, who didn't want us to do the work on the Heath, even though it was a legal requirement. The City of London had the money to do the work, they wanted to do the work, and yet there was a, a group of people who live around the heath who wanted to protect the heath and they didn't believe that we could do major civil engineering works without causing too much difference in the visual impact to the heath. So that was really another challenge. How do you engineer something that's quite significant and yet meet the requirements? And really it was very difficult to say to people, just trust me, I'll design you a scheme that at the end of the day you'll say, well, what was the fuss about? And actually things have improved. They were against the scheme from day one and it was a very difficult period, um, which took a long time. The City of London spent a lot of money and took a lot of time and effort, very good effort, to try and help people accept that the scheme had to be done and that it would not be damaging to the heath. As it happens, once we've done the work, which included building a new dam, raising this dam that I'm standing on, and building a, a, an island behind me, using the materials that we dug out, the environment has improved, 
the water quality has improved, actually the habitats have improved and they found species that they thought were extinct in London. Um, actually this site and the various dams that we worked on has won four national awards um, for blending with the environment, improving the environment. So it's been a really gratifying job. And as a civil engineer and a young person that might be thinking of going into civil engineering, find a niche market in civil engineering. It's such a wide spectrum of, of various activities. But dam engineering is one where every day is different. As I said, every dam is unique, every person is unique, every problem is unique, every client is unique, every issue that you have is unique. And it makes life so interesting. It's such an interesting job.